this session of uh, the Swift tutorials, we continue our coverage of uh, the overview of uh, some of the basic concepts in Swift. Um, the three remaining topics uh, to look at are the Boolean types, uh, the uh, tuples and also um, the optionals which both are parts of the advanced types uh, in, in Swift. So let us start with the boolean type and give a very uh, brief description of, of a boolean type is. Um, a parameter uh, which is of boolean type can only have two values true or false um, and a, an example of a declaration of a boolean variable here is shown as uh, light is on which is a name of of the variable uh, it's of type boolean which is uh, shown uh, as b-o-o-l and we are assigning a value of true to it so there are two possible values we are assigning a value of true to to this so this is an example of declaration declaration and assignment is done following the same syntax as in the previous uh, cases um, the boolean values are are very useful in conditional statements i mean examples of that would be uh, if statements or uh, while loops. Uh, a very um, simple example of, of an if statement uh, based on uh, the variable that we declared above could be something like this that if lights on that means if lights on is true then we do a set of statements following uh, the if condition. So in order for these statements to be executed the if condition in which in this case is uh, the, the value of lights on has to be true if that is not the case uh, all the statements which follow the if statement within the body of uh, uh, body of the if uh, statement will be ignored so that is a uh, one uh, useful or one important example of the usage of booleans usage of them in if statements and also while loops which I, I'm not showing here at the moment the next um, very important type which is used in Swift uh, is called uh, tuple or uh, when we are talking about tuples, uh, we are talking about groups, uh, a group of values. So one tuple is a group of values. So we group some values uh, together and we call that a tuple. These values do not have to be of the same type. They can be of different types. Uh, the general syntax for creating a, a tuple is like this. We have parentheses and inside the parentheses we have different values which as I mentioned could be of different data types. Uh, here's an example uh, where we have one, two and three different values uh, and our tuple has three different values. The first two elements of the tuple here uh, are numbers. So one is of type integer, the other one is of type uh, double or float. And the last thing is the last element is of type string and it's called string one. So for the, uh, f we could also um, name the elements of the tuples. I mean instead of just having two, 3.2 and string 1 as the elements 
and showing 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 them without any names we could actually name those those values so for instance uh, 2 here is named as t1 this could be any name uh, but i'm just using a simple short name calling it t1 um, second element is called t2 and third element is called t3 so so these are just names they're not they're not variables they are names they're used to sort of label the elements of uh, of a tuple when we are dealing with tuples and when we want to um, declare and assign a variable which is of type tuple this is an example uh, that we we can use and and follow so here we have again a, a variable called x which is of type tuple because of the way we are presenting uh, these these groups of elements the important thing is that um, although tuple is itself is known as a type but it's a very loose uh, terminology used for tuple tuple a tuple itself has a type on its own and the type would be uh, the types of uh, the elements of the tuple so in particular in this particular case when we have 2 and 3.2 as the elements of our tuple uh, we can say that x, uh, x is a tuple and the type of that tuple is int double so that means the first element is of type uh, integer second value is of type double Um, when we have when we are dealing with the tuple, it is possible to uh, access the values of a tuple uh, in a process called decomposition. Also, it is it is possible to write in the values of tuple uh, using the following mechanism. Um, for instance. Uh, uh, one way to to actually access the elements uh, of a tuple is by using uh, by using um, indices of the elements by index what I mean is uh, the first element of a tuple is given in that index 0 the second element is given index 1 and so forth so the important thing is that that the in the sequence of indices start with the value 0 so index 0 1 2 3 and so on so now if we are uh, declaring a variable or a constant in this case a constant let's call it x0 and we want to assign a value to it and that value is going to be extracted uh, from from a tuple if you want uh, the first elements of a tuple to be uh, used as an assignment for the value of x0 what we use is x.0 where x is the name uh, the name of our variable which is a tuple and dot zero means the first element of tuple called x uh, similarly if you want to uh, assign the second value of our tuple to a constant or variable we use dot one so where one is the index and dot is just used to separate the name of the variable from the index so this would result uh, in x zero to be equal to two where two is uh, is the first element of our tuple and similarly x1 will be equal to 3.2 which is the second element of our tuple um, an alternative to using in indices is by using uh, the names or labels that we use for for our, our elements so in this case for instance uh, the first element 
uh, is named T0, the second element is named T1. So we can extract the first element using this arrangement x dot t0 where t0 is the name of our our tuples element similarly if you want to extract uh, the second element we use the name of the second element which is t1 using the same ar arrangement as before so this would again result uh, uh, in x naught being equal to 2 and x1 being equal to 3.2 the same as before so it the, the results are exactly the same uh, regardless of whether we're using the names or the indices of, of the elements of a tuple. Um, if we wish to uh, extract uh, all the elements of a tuple in one go and assign them to a set of variables are constants we can just follow uh, this example so here we have x0 and x1 as being two variables uh, as as uh, as the previous uh, the same way as in the pre previous example uh, and we want to extract the elements of x and assign them to x0 and x1 so one thing uh, not to be confused about here is that when we are using the parentheses and the name of the variables like this, this is not a representation of, uh, of tuple. We are just grouping these two together within parentheses before we're putting them in front of let. So this would mean that there will be a one-to-one -one correspondence between the variables that we list here and the elements uh, of, of the tuple x. So again, by doing so, we get the same results as before, where x0 is going to be equal to 2, and x1 is going to be 3.2. Again, notice the values of the first and second element uh, elements of, of x0, uh, of uh, tuple x. If we want to uh, group our uh, variables are constants as uh, mentioned earlier but we do not need uh, to extract some of the tuples elements what we do is we replace uh, our variable with an underscore so what this means that we only wish to extract the first element of tuple x and assign it to x naught we don't care about the second element of x so as a result uh, what happens is this was this will result in assignment of the first element of x which is 2 to x naught and the second element is ignored let's now examine uh, the two topics that we just discussed a little bit further by uh, trying a few examples in Xcode. Uh, the first topic was uh, Boolean type. So here I'm uh, declaring a variable called condition1 as being Boolean and I'm setting it to be equal to true. Now if I use this variable condition1 as the condition of a if statement, because it is true the body of the, if of the if statement, which at the moment only includes one print uh, statement, um, is executed. And we can see that to be true, where down here we see condition is satisfied, which is actually the message that the uh, print function is, is printing if condition one is true. On the other hand, if we set condition 1 to be equal to false then the the condition of our if statement will be false and as a result the body of the if, the if statement is no longer executed and we can see here that there is no message printed now 
one thing to uh, which is somewhat related to to this uh, boolean type uh, discussion is the difference between assignment um, you know if we uh, declare a variable capital X and assign a value of 3 to it this here we are saying we are saying that X is equal to 3 that means we are assigning this value to X this would be different uh, to a statement like this this statement is not saying that X is equal to 3 it is asking a question that whether X is equal to 3 or not so in this particular case when we're using two equal signs instead of one we are not assigning value of 3 to X we're saying is the statement that X is equal to 3 true or false and answer, answer for that would be true so here we're saying X equals to 3 is true because we set it to be equal to 3 now if instead of 3 we say X equal equal 2 we're just asking the question is this a correct statement and the answer is no it's it's false X is not equal to 2 because we're setting it to be 3 so the outcome of this statement is a boolean value so it's important to see the difference between this statement and that statement where we actually assign a value to X now because statement like this is a boolean uh, is a boolean type we could use it in if statements or while loops or anything uh, uh, which involves the the usage of booleans so let's uh, bring in an if statement so here instead of having this condition one as being the condition of our uh, if statement we are actually using x equal equal to 2 uh, as being our condition so if this is true then whatever uh, contained within the body of the if, if statement will be executed otherwise uh, nothing will happen so at the moment because x equal equal to 2 is false we don't see this print function doing anything but if I were going to change this to x equal equal to 3 then this will become true and as a result the condition of the if statement will be true and the print function here will be executed and you see the result down here uh, next I'm going to show a um, number of tuple, tuple, tuple examples uh, here is a uh, uh, the same tuple example that I was showing on the slides and um, for this case as before we have a three element tuple the first two uh, elements are numbers the third one is a string and this is what Swift generates uh, uh, and as we can see here the numbers, ex additional numbers that are appearing here uh, are the numbers generated by Swift which are actually the indices uh, to, to the elements of the tuple now uh, this is no declaration or assignment it's just a simple tuple that uh, I just typed in to, to see what the outcome of that would be but uh, next let's uh, 
have a look at the uh, an example of uh, a tuple declaration so here we're declaring a variable called uh, tuple one and then we we are assigning it uh, this this tuple the same tuple as we were using before so in this case I am not using any names for the elements of the of the of the tuple we we could do that and uh, as in the case of uh, the examples in the slides uh, I'm using very short simple names T0, T1, T2 uh, as names for the elements, the various elements of our tuple. So I'm calling that tuple 2. So um, now let's show how uh, we can actually uh, extract uh, that is extract uh, elements of tuple uh, the, uh, in other words the terminology decomposition uh, here I'm declaring a variable uh, and I'm assigning the tuple element with index 0 to, to this variable uh, the result is 2 so because this is tuple 1, this the f index 0 uh, of tuple 1 points to this value, which is 2, and this is what we see as a result of this assignment. Alternatively, as I mentioned before, we could use the, uh, if, if we have already named um, the elements of the uh, the tuple we can actually use those names to to extract the tuple elements so here is uh, an example so in this case I'm extracting uh, the element of tuple 2 uh, which has name T1 uh, and assigning it to this variable called second second element so this is tuple 2 and t1 uh, is the label for the value 3.2 and this is what we're seeing as the outcome of this assignment in addition to uh, accessing the elements of a tuple and reading their values it is possible to assign uh, values to various elements of a tuple but what is important is in doing so we have to make sure that the data type of our uh, assigned value is going to be the same as the data type of the element that we are trying to uh, to change. Uh, for instance, um, in the case of tuple 1, uh, the first element of, of this tuple uh, is 2, which is an integer. So the type of the first element of tuple 1 is integer. So if we decide, if we wish to change the value of this element we can do so by just uh, using this uh, this format tuple one dot zero this is which is the index of the first element of tuple one we could also use the name of the element if a name is available and, and si assign it to uh, an, an integer value, in this particular case, uh, 10. Now, if you go back and um, type tuple 1 to see what, the, what its new values are, we can see that the first value is changed to 10 from uh, what it used to be, which was 2. But 
let's uh, try to assign a double uh, to to the first element of tuple one. Uh, as you can see, there is a there is a runtime error here, and the reason is what I already mentioned that uh, the type of the new reassignment has to be the same as the type of the element we are trying to to modify. Now, um, the next thing to look at is the one-to-one -one, um, assignment of the elements of a tuple to a series of variables. This is something that we've already seen in the slides. Uh, let's just uh, see this, uh, see them again in, in Xcode. So here, what I'm trying to do is I have a group of variables, m1, m2, m3, and I would like to assign them the individual values of tuple 1. So this is the format to follow, as we've seen before. Now, to just show that uh, these new variables have the same values as the tuple elements, I just typed them in here. You can see M1, M2, M3, and their corresponding values are 10, 3.2, string 1, which are the same as 10, 3.2, string 1, which are the elements of tuple 1. Um, one other thing that we uh, talked about before, um, and I'm trying, trying to show again here, is uh, when we try to sort of extract a certain number of the um, elements of a given tuple and not all of them. So uh, if you remember the in doing so uh, we would replace the position of of the sequence of variables that uh, we are using by an underscore uh, where we don't wish to uh, to, to do any uh, extraction of the tuple elements. So in this case, the second element of tuple 1 is of no importance to us. So we, we use an underscore here to indicate it. So we only wish to extract the first and the last elements of tuple 1. So we should get uh, a value of m4 which is equal to the first element of tuple 1 which is 10 that is correct and let's see what m5 is it should it is expected to be equal to string 1 and yes that is that is indeed the case This will bring us to the end of discussion of uh, tuples and to the end of part three of the basic concepts of Swift. Um, in the next part, we will be discussing other uh, basic concepts of Swift, including optionals. <laughs>